Very few shows are perfect. Even beloved classics such as Breaking Bad, The Wire, MASH and Twin Peaks have something working against them, be it terrible characters, bad acting or risky narrative choices. None of these, however, have a truly bad season or two which trip them up during their run. Many other shows have not been so lucky. Sometimes a season or two can completely derail a show so it never recovers. Some have a great run marred with predictability or bad characters and others simply never realise their true potential. The following list will have a look at the shows which suffered because of its plot, characters, writing and acting, but managed, often miraculously, to pull themselves back up and come back better than ever. None of these shows were ever outright awful, mind, but before these seasons, they were certainly headed to the point where fans would either jump off completely or the networks would start seriously considering cancellation. Whatever the case, these are 10 shows that were saved by one excellent season of TV. Major spoilers will follow. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 amazing comeback seasons that saved dying TV shows. Number 10, Parks and Recreation, Season 2. It may be hard to admit now, but Parks and Rec didn't get off to a massively successful start. Running for only six episodes, season one was far too short to get into the swing of things. The characters, though still funny, weren't yet fully realised, and the mockumentary style structure and predictable plots made it seem like nothing more than a weak carbon copy of the far superior show, The US Office. Then then came season 2. Though fans and critics were previously sceptical about how successful the show could be, season 2 put everyone's worries aside and came into its own. The characters, particularly Nick Offerman's Ron Swanson and Amy Poehler's Leslie Nope, were more refined and better written, and the stories, peaking with the fun and sweet Galentine's Day and the hilarious Park's safety, were more engaging and unique than the previous outing. After that, Parks and Rec went from strength to strength with each season more entertaining and daring than the last. Now a cult classic, it's a prime example of why you should give a show a chance to see what it's made of. Number 9, Sons of Anarchy, Season 4 Dying may be too strong of a word for what was happening to Sons of Anarchy. The biker crime drama had a solid outing with its first two seasons, but Season 3 tried a touch too hard to mix up the tropes of the show and shift gears, and it suffered because of it. Season 2 ends with Jax Teller's son, Abel, being kidnapped by the true IRA, setting up epic things for the next instalment. Though the season 3 opener, So, was strong, dealing with the aftermath of the kidnapping, the rest of the season moves away from charming to Belfast. The Belfast arc is long and plodding, with little engagement with the mystery of Abel, and as a whole this drags the show down. Also, Titus Welliver's Jimmy O'Fallon makes for a weak villain and one of TV's worst ever accents. When season 4 came along, fans were looking forward to a return to form, a return to charming and Sam Crow's inner turmoil. Season 4 introduces audiences to a new lawman, Eli Roosevelt, and explores the true evil intentions and checkered past of Clay Morrow. It's riveting stuff, held up by a constant intensity and some fantastic performances and proves that some shows don't need a shake-up to be effective. They're fine, just the way they are. Number 8, Fear the Walking Dead, Season 3 Here's the thing with the first two seasons of Fear the Walking Dead. They're actually pretty good, from a plot standpoint. They do a good job of introducing fans to the initial zombie, oh, sorry, walker outbreak that sets in motion The Walking Dead, and the change in setting and narrative is usually well handled. This is especially true to Season 2, much of which takes place at sea and pays off beautifully. The problem is character. Whilst The Walking Dead set up their run with some extraordinary characters, all of whom were instantly engaging and great to watch, Fear has a tough time making any of its characters likeable, the sole exception being Frank Delane's Nick, and instead focuses its opening seasons on setting up the post-apocalyptic world. Season 3 then came along and changed everything. Suddenly, fans were given some seriously meaty new characters, the Otto family and the Kalataqua Walker, and old characters became more accessible. Madison finds her footing after two seasons of inconsistency, Alicia moves up to the centre stage with a compelling arc, and Daniel is given a bigger opportunity to show just how cool, badass and caring he can be. Pair all of this with Fear's most engrossing and high stakes plot yet, featuring sordid pasts, war and some deep mysteries, and what you've got is a season of television which did more than keep its show afloat, it made it better than ever. Number 7, American Horror Story Season 7, Cult. American Horror Story is a 
show that prides itself on shaking things up. With each season focusing on completely different characters, situations and terrors, it's of course expected that the show is going to change. Whilst the first three seasons were all stunning and well executed, season 4 Freak Show saw a major drop in quality. Season 5 Hotel then returned the show to the form with some solid mystery and great performances. Lady Gaga, anyone? Then came season 6, Roanoke. You can be forgiven for thinking Freak Show wasn't great, and for thinking that after Hotel everything was right with the world again, because it's safe to say that next to no one was expecting the show to stoop to this level of disappointment. Roanoke, all told, was a mess. The characters were sloppy, the plot weak and forgettable, and the split between documentary and found footage horror was poor at best. It maintains the cool and gloomy aesthetic of American Horror Story, sure, but with no substance and characters fall flat from the get-go. Season 7 Cult was originally advertised as a response to the election of Donald Trump, prompting moans throughout the fandom, but no one was expecting what they got. A tightly written, mostly horrorless entry full of clowns, paranoia, insanity and rage. Evan Peters was better than ever as Kai Anderson, amongst others, and Adina Porter was on fiery form. Despite some ham-fisted political generalisations, the intensity, powerhouse performances and change in tone make Cult a much needed addition to the show. Number 6, The Hundred, Season 6. The Hundred is a seriously underrated piece of post-apocalyptic television, full of great characters, visuals, threats, mysteries and social commentary. Each season, in regards to plot and character direction, got better and better. But Season 5, issues began to form. Mostly the problem by this point was the predictability of the plot. There were the survivors, they meet a new group, they cause a war, loads of people die, and someone says, well, it's okay because at least my people are alive. By Season 5, this formulaic narrative had started to grow stale, sloppy in places and refused to take any big risks. You know watching each season how everything and everyone will turn out. Season 6 followed a solid cliffhanger from the previous season though. Waking from a 125 year cryo sleep, our anti-heroes find themselves orbiting a new haven, a moon they soon learn is called Sanctum, featuring its own civilization, government and characters. Whilst this may sound like what you've already seen, only with a time jump, the change in tone, setting and plot makes season 6 the best the show has ever been. New characters enter the mix and are instantly great to watch. The visuals are bright and stunning and the show takes risks, putting main character Clark into a position of vulnerability and throwing the group into a deep and sinister mystery. The whole thing feels like a fresh and cool addition to a show previously risking the realm of boring. Number 5, True Detective Season 3. The first season of True Detective remains one of the best seasons of television ever made. Sporting a crafty narrative, an intriguing mystery, and career best performances from leads Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson, season one was a blast from the start to finish. Packed with emotion, cleverly written, tightly plotted, just as TV should be. So when season two was announced with a change in protagonists, plot and setting, fans were rightly interested. Unfortunately, what they received was a bit of a shambolic follow-up. Though lead actors Colin Farrell and Rachel McAdams gave riveting performances, the plot was let down in a big way by predictable twists and noticeably less passionate writing. A good police drama in its own right, sure, but not a true detective vehicle. When season 3 came along then, fans were slightly more hesitant. In hindsight though, they needn't have been. Strange, dark, twisting and massively held together by two-time Oscar winner Mahershala Ali. True detective Detective's third outing carries everything that made its debut so enthralling whilst remaining very much its own story. The mystery is strong, the characters stronger, and not once does it let up. With season 4 on the way, here's to hoping that season 2 really was a one-time bump in the road. Number 4, The Walking Dead Season 9 the Walking Dead has had some bumps in its long and epic road, from fake death scenes with Glenn to grisly murders, also Glenn. From annoying characters, looking at you, Laurie, to weak villains such as Gareth. The Walking Dead is a show which has suffered under the weight of its need to outdo itself and keep things fresh. Most of the time it has succeeded in doing so, other times it has let itself and the fans down. Never has that been more true than when referring to season 7 and 8, also known as the Negan years. Both seasons admittedly had some cool and compelling moments, the arcs of Gabriel and Negan himself coming to mind, but mostly they are both long, ponderous, disconnected additions to an otherwise striking and formidable series. Negan was a great villain who became more cartoonish as the seasons progressed, major and fan favourite characters characters were sidelined and forgotten, and the climax, after 32 episodes, was a big letdown with little satisfaction. 
Season 9, meanwhile, reinvented the entire show. Helmed by new showrunner Angela Kang, Walking Dead became better than ever. Previously sidelined characters take center stage after a moving and well-executed exit for Rick, and the new antagonists, the Whisperers, are a terrifying and genuine threat. Pair all of that with a crafty time jump, Season 9 is a fresh and intelligent take on a show which deserves praise for its longevity and its ability to bounce back. Number 3, Community, Season 5. Season 5 of Community is an underrated and overhated gem. Yes, we miss Troy and Pierce and Shaw, trying to fill their absences with new and less entertaining characters was a risk. But after Season 4, it cannot be denied that the fifth entry was a welcome and rejuvenating addition to a great sitcom. The problem with season 4 is simple. Dan Harmon was gone and behind the scenes drama with Chevy Chase made Pierce a much smaller presence going in. Also without Harmon's magic touch, the misadventures of our favourite study group became too predictable, uninspired and often just weak retreads of what came before. It's got its moments but as a whole, season 4 is a forgettable addition to an unforgettable series. Season 5 then had its work cut out for it, with Donald Glover being written out to explore his booming career and Pierce killed off due to Harmon and Chase his feud, it seemed like another season would be a guaranteed failure. This was not the case though. With Harmon back behind the creative wheel, community felt more alive and daring than ever. New adventures were fun and exciting, and new and old characters were as compelling and ridiculous as ever. Sure, it's not quite as strong as the first three seasons, but season five deserves much more respect for its grasp of its characters, jokes, and simply insane situations. Number two, Angel, season five. Right, let's get this out in the open. Season 4 of Angel was dreadful. It was messy, slow, silly, and full of poor characters, such as Connor, and a constant presence of character assassination. It cannot be forgiven for the way it portrayed Cordelia Chase, nor can it be justified for making Connor both a main character and Cordelia's love interest. <laughs> The only great part of season 4 were the episodes Spin the Bottle, a classic Buffyverse comedy body switch scenario, and the finale Home, which promises a major shakeup for the future of the show. Before and after that though, it felled both its narrative and its characters and never really picked up steam. So season 5 admittedly had its work cut out for it, but boy did it pull off a miracle. Changing the setting of the show to a law firm, Wolfram and Hart, the big bad of the previous seasons, and giving the main group new and compelling roles, Gun goes from muscles to brains, Wesley goes back to his watcher roots, Angel becomes the good guy fighting evil from the inside, and then Angel becomes fresh, new, daring, and intelligent, able to move its characters around with ease and not once betray them. It also adds to the pot a back from the dead Spike, who steals the show every chance he gets, and a satisfying look at life after the series finale of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, and it brought us smile time. Enough said. Number 1, Bojack Horseman Season 2 Much like Parks and Rec, Bojack Horseman's debut season was not a bad piece of television. In fact, it was quite good. The jokes were funny and intelligent, the setting and the addition of animal-human hybrids in a world we all recognise was inspired, and the potential was brimming from the start. Unfortunately, the first season suffers from a need to be an adult animation. It's crass, lacks any real heart, and isn't very daring or fresh in a world of South Park, Family Guy, and American Dad. It wasn't until season 2 that Bojack found its legs. Picking up right after the show's first outing, the series adopts a much more mature and level-headed approach to its storytelling, tackling themes such as alcoholism, depression, sex and drug use with much more intelligence and gravitas than before. As it turns out, this was a step in the right direction, more popular, smart and daring than anyone could have foreseen whilst watching season 1. From then on, Bojack Horseman transcended genre and perfected its themes, social commentary and symbolism with each episode. The show recently finished up its run earlier this year, and not once did it ever miss a beat since that sophomore outing, and the world's a better place for it. And there we go, the 10 amazing comeback seasons that saved dying TV shows. Thank goodness. But let us know your favourites down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I've been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next video.